Hello, sixth graders, it's Mrs. Parsons here, and I would like to make a video today on how we're going to wrap up and finish our lessons on geometry. You know, over the last couple of weeks, several, several weeks, probably about four weeks, we have talked about what is a net, how do we name that net based on its three-dimensional figure, how do we draw and create that net? And then how do we use that net to find surface area? And that's everything I have here on the back of this whiteboard or the smart screen behind me. It, of course, it says Happy Monday first. It's October the 12th. And that we're going to wrap up and finish nets. And that is naming them, creating them, and using them to find surface area. And then we're going to be taking another quiz over these nets, ladies and gentlemen. So... For this video, I would like to show you a net, a three-dimensional figure. Uh, I should back that up. I want to show you a three-dimensional figure, how it turns into a net, then how we take that net and find the surface area of that original three-dimensional figure. So I've made screens ahead of time for us, if I can click on them. And then I want to get rid of that little box. So let me, maybe if I click somewhere else. No, it just wants to stay on there. How come that is? There it goes. Um, so here is a three-dimensional figure. And what I first want us to start doing is, can we name this three-dimensional figure? And then can we find its faces, its edges, and its vertex? So let's just start with that first, okay? We're looking at this figure, and I see that, to me, it looks like triangles. I'm going to think you think it looks like triangles as well. But it's standing up and it's connected, and it looks like it has a flat bottom, which to me then would give it the name of a pyramid. So I'm thinking that this lovely thing, ladies and gentlemen, is a pyramid. And I can even go a step further and say exactly what shape it is that's developing that pyramid. And right down here, it's a square. So anytime it's a square, you can use the word square or you can just call it a uh, pyramid. And it'd help if I, Miss P is going to spell it right here. You can just call it a pyramid because a pyramid that has a square bottom is just known as a pyramid. Now I can change that bottom, which is known as its base, to a rectangle or to a triangle, and then I can call that pyramid a specific type of pyramid. I can call it a rectangular pyramid. I can call it a triangular pyramid or a triangular prism. Um, normally a prism because it's going to be all triangles um, for that triangular base. But when it's just a square, I can call it a square pyramid, or I can just call it a pyramid because most pyramids, their bases and their bottoms are the square. So I now see that I have a pyramid. That's my three-dimensional figure. And then I want to find out, if I'm going to turn it into a net, what other types of two-dimensional figures make up that three-dimensional shape. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to start looking at how many faces, edges, and vertex this actual three-dimensional figure may have because that will tell me how many I should then put onto my grid, my graphing paper, that will tell me all the sides that I need to create a net. So I'm going to first look, and I'm going to write them down here. I, the bottom, the base, looks like it is a square to me. So there's one face. And then I know a square has four sides, ladies and gentlemen. And if it has four sides, then there must be something connected to each one of those sides that make it a three-dimensional figure. And in this case, I look at this side right here, and it looks like what's coming from that side, that edge, is a triangle. Well, if a triangle is coming from that side, I'm going to imagine a triangle, a triangle, and a triangle is going to be coming from every one of those sides. So to me, it looks like this pyramid is made up of four triangles. So I'm going to write four triangles. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are my two, the, those things are my two-dimensional figures that make up my three-dimensional shape. So I have a square and four triangles. So that must mean I have five faces. Now, just a side note, these lovely things actually have names, as in their shape, you call them a triangle, but when they're in a three-dimensional figure, they're called lateral faces, and lateral means what you can see up and down facing outward, and this lovely thing, so this is lateral, hopefully you can see that, and this lovely thing is its base, okay? 
And that's the shapes that make up your three-dimensional figure. We're then going to count the edges of this three-dimensional figure. Now, we already know some things. We know it's got a triangle. I'm going to use a different color, in fact. We know that it has not a triangle either. I said it and I heard myself say it. We know it has a rectangle as its base. So we know that, and I just said it again, it's a square. It has a square as its base. And we know a square has uh, four sides. So I know it's got four edges there. We also know that triangles have three sides, but because they're going to join each other in our three-dimensional figure, then it takes two sides to make an edge. So we only have one, two, three, four extra edges, ladies and gentlemen, because they've already been used at the bottom in the square. So the bottom of the triangle has been used. And then the two other sides of the triangle come together to make one edge when they join together in a three-dimensional figure. So then I can see I have one, two, three, four other edges in the triangle, which means all together I have eight edges. The last thing I'm going to look for is my vertex, which when there's many, that means vertices. I know a square has four corners. So I know that this has at least four vertex, but I also know if it's a pyramid, it comes to a point at the top. So there is my fifth vertex. So it means that there are five vertex to that lovely three-dimensional figure. So now once I figured that all out, and the reason I want to know that is when I draw my net out, I have to be able to see this stuff. So I'm going to slide over here and hopefully I won't be off camera. I'm going to turn it again a little bit and hopefully it won't fall. I'm going to draw that out onto my grid. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a square. And you may not have grid paper, sixth graders. And when you draw a net out, don't worry about if it's not perfect, if, especially if you don't have grid paper. Um, you'll never be able to draw it to what we call scale, okay? You can't make that actual thing. What happens if it's 100 feet? You're not going to be able to make it and draw it out as 100 feet. So you kind of want to scale it to what you can do when you draw it out. In this case, I'm just, I don't know what these are right now, so I'm just gonna draw what I think the figures are, what the shapes are in my three-dimensional object. So I know it's a square, so I'm gonna make my square, and I wanna at least make it look like it's even. So I'm gonna do a three by three by three. When you don't have grid paper, you just don't worry about it. Just make sure that thing looks like a square. I'm then going to draw my other faces because that's my base. Now I'm going to do my lateral sides, which are my other faces. And I know there are one, two, three, four triangles that come off of this. So just again, trying to do my very best. Not perfect. Just trying to do, you know, where it looks like I have some triangles. I'm going to draw my four triangles off of those sides because I know that's how my net is set up. It has a square base, a square bottom, and it has four triangles that come off the sides or the edges of my square. So now, sixth graders, I have named my pyramid. I'm going to underline this. I've named my pyramid. It is a three-dimensional figure. I have counted all the faces, the edges, and the vertices, the vertex, that make up this figure. And hopefully from there, I can then start to find the area of this three-dimensional object, this three-dimensional figure. So there is my three-dimensional figure turned into what is now known as two-dimensional figures because they're flat. Now I've laid them out flat and I've counted all their parts, their pieces that make them up. I'm then going to take this sixth graders I'm, and I've already made all these pages for us. I'm going to look at this figure and I want to see now, can I just freehand it? Sorry, I stepped off the screen. I just want to freehand it now. I don't want any grid paper. Well, I know uh, there's a square. I'm going to get rid of this so it looks more like a square. I know there's a square and I know that there are some triangles that come off of it. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it looks like it is a square with four triangles coming off of it. So I'm going to step back for a minute to my screen that I had. 
oops, it moved my page. Let me move it. We started with a three-dimensional object. We had grid paper and we broke it down into its net. We did that by finding how many faces, edges, and vertex there were. And then we were able to draw it out either on grid paper or just by drawing it by ourselves without any lines, just drawing out the picture. We're now going to take this, sixth graders, once we figure out what it looks like as a net, and Mrs. P has it as a net right here for you. This is the net we just drew out. We're now going to take that. We're going to put some dimensions to it. Now, I want to reiterate to you what dimensions mean. Dimensions are the length, the width, the height, or the base of three-dimensional and two-dimensional objects. You have to have dimensions, and that's how we measure the object. How are we measuring it? Do I have its length? Do I have its width? Do I have its height? Do I have its base? What you measure with are things like feet, inches, centimeters, meters. Those are the things you measure with. These are the ones you measure, ladies and gentlemen. Measure your length, your width, your height, and then you measure it by using a type of measurement. So hopefully that makes a little sense. Whenever we ask for the dimensions, what we're looking for are the numbers that are used in your three-dimensional object. We're looking for the numbers. So we took our three-dimensional figure, figure from before, we broke it into a net, and now we actually have some dimensions put to this three-dimensional figure. So now we want to find the area of this three-dimensional figure. And again, I have another little page for that. So, and I'm actually going to see if I can move that up in the corner because it's probably going to take me a little bit of room to do this. So here's our three-dimensional figure that we started off with. Then we broke it into a net. We saw the faces and we realized how many edges and vertex it had. And now we want to see, can we find the area of this figure? Again, if you want to, sixth graders, what I would do would be to draw out your beautiful figure. It has a square base, a square bottom, and it has one, two, three, four triangles that come off of that, that square. Now, once you have that, no, isn't that so beautiful, crooked, but you get the idea. Once you have that figure, you now want to start looking for the dimensions that tell you how you're going to find the area of each one of those faces, because that's what surface area is. And I want to remind you, surface area can be abbreviated now with S-A. That's the abbreviation for surface area. We want to find the surface area of this three-dimensional figure. And to do that, you need to find the surface area, the S-A, of all the faces in the three-dimensional figure. You want to find, I kind of added an extra little loop-de-loo there. You want to find all of the area for every face in your three-dimensional figure. So a three-dimensional figure down to two-dimensional. Three-dimensional figure down to two-dimensional figure. And we want to find this area of every one of these two-dimensional figures. And when we find the surface area of all of the faces in the three-dimensional figure, we add them together. That's what we want to do to find the surface area, ladies and gentlemen. We want to find the area for every one of the faces that are two-dimensional, and then we want to add them all together. So, we first got to figure out what the dimensions are for every one of the two-dimensional faces. Well, it's easy for the bottom. We know the bottom, or the base, is the square. A square is even on all sides. And it looks like to me, I'm going to highlight it in yellow, that this square is 8 by 8, which means every side of the square is 8. So if I say that I know to find the area of a square, I go S times S, and hopefully you can see that. Maybe I better use a better color. S times S finds the area of a square. I'm just going to take 8 times 8 is 64. So I'm going to say that this square is 64 feet squared. And I'm going to go ahead and write that down. 64 
feet square, and that's my square on the inside. I now have to find the area of every triangle. So I need to find the dimensions of each triangle. Well, to me, sixth graders, it looks like it says that the base of every triangle is eight. How do I know that it is eight? Because right here, sixth graders, is the base to those triangles. It was the side of the square, but it's also the base of the triangle because that's where the edges meet. So when I read that, it tells me that every one of these triangles, and that's kind of, you can't really see that very well. Every one of these bottoms to the triangle are eight. The base of every triangle is eight because the square had eight for its sides. And if that's where the base of the triangle touched the square, then the base has to be eight as well. So it's eight. I then look to see if I can find a height of the triangle anywhere. Is there somewhere a 90 degree angle that runs into a base that tells me how high, how tall the triangle is? Where well, here's the base, and if you're looking right here, sixth graders, you see a 90 degree angle, and right there is the height. And I have an arrow pointing to it that tells me it is 9.2 feet tall. So I know now that the dimensions for my triangles are the base is eight and the height is 9.2. And do you see how I made those uh, points in different spots, ladies and gentlemen? This is the point I use for multiplication. It goes in the middle. And this is my decimal, meaning nine and two tenths, and it's at the bottom of the numbers. That way you can tell the difference between your multiplication sign and your decimal sign, okay? So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the area of my triangle, but we know we have to take half of it. So whatever I do, whenever I get my answer here, my solution, my product, product, I have to take half of it. So I can multiply 9.2 times eight. And I'm gonna do that right over here and hopefully you can still see it on screen. 9.2 times eight. Of course, eight times two is 16. Regroup my one over there. And eight times nine is 72, plus my one is 73. Again, don't forget, you have one decimal with one spot behind it. So you have to move that decimal over. So sixth graders, that's telling me that the area right there is 73.6. But we cannot forget when you find the area of a triangle, you always have to take half of it. You can only take half of it. So I now need to take this and I need to divide it by two. So again, I'll do it over here. 73.6 and I want to divide it by two. Well, I know two goes into seven three times which is six, that leaves me one. I bring down my three and two and a 13 goes six, which is 12. That leaves me one. I bring down my six and two into 16 goes eight times. And I know I have to have a decimal in it somewhere, sixth graders. And if there's no decimal out here and I'm not moving anything, I can just bring my decimal in here straight up. And so that tells me that the area of one of these triangles right here, the area of that triangle, half of its base times its height, half of eight times nine and two tenths, half of it is 36 and eight tenths. And I can check that. I can add that twice, 36 and eight tenths, 36 and eight tenths, and I should get back 73 and six tenths. And you will if you do that, sixth graders. So now, sixth graders, I know the area of one triangle is 36 and 8 tenths. Great! I now figured out this triangle right here. Oh, but I see something else I can do quickly. There are four of those triangles, and they all have to be equal because, one, they touch at this vertex up here, and, two, they are all touching the base of the square, which means that all of their bases have to be 8. So they all have to be the same size. So instead of me doing all this work again and again and again three more times, all I have to do is take the 36.8 times four because that's what each triangle represents. 
So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take 36.8 and get the right side of the marker. 36.8 and I'm going to multiply it by 4 because that's how many triangles I have in that three-dimensional figure. When I multiply that, 8 times 4 is 32. Regroup my 3. 4 times 6, ladies and gentlemen, is 24. Plus the 3 I regrouped is 27. Regroup my 2. And 4 times 3 is 12. Plus the 2 I regrouped is 14. Again, I look for how many decimals are in my problem. There's one. How many spots are behind it? There's one. So I move my decimal over one time. And it says the area of the triangles is 147. 147. Don't use an and in there. 147 and 2 tenths feet square. And what that really means is I added 36.8, 36.8, 36.8, 36.8, 36 four times. And when I did that four times, it came up to 147 and 2 tenths. Now, sixth graders, I have found the area of this, 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 and this, because it is, every one of those is that, and all four of them together is this. I've now found the area of my triangles. I found the area of my square. All I have left to do is to add them all together, sixth graders. And if I add up 64 and 147 and 2 tenths, I need to make sure I do it correctly. And that means I'm not going to, ladies and gentlemen, count decimals here. But because I'm adding and subtracting, I need to line up my decimals. So I want to look at this. Here I lined up the numbers. You don't want to do that when you're adding and subtracting decimals. You want to line up the decimals. Well, in the number 64, there was no decimal. But you should know anytime you have a number, there's always a decimal added or always a decimal in it. And that decimal is always at the back. So I want to put the decimal over the other decimal. Now I want to put these numbers over the top of each other. And if I want, I can put a zero there. So there'll be a number right over that other number. But the important thing is make sure when you're adding and subtracting decimals, you line them up. You don't count and move. So now I can add these all up. I get zero plus two is two. I bring down my decimal in the same spot. 4 plus 7 is 11. Regroup my 1. 6 plus 4 plus 1 is 11 again. Regroup my 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So it says that the area of this pyramid is 211 and 2 tenths feet squared. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how we found the area of a three-dimensional object using a net. Now, I don't think I have any more pages because I think that's all I was going to discuss with you. And the reason I'm going to stop that there is you are going to take a quiz, sixth graders, tomorrow. We've been talking about nets since Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we've been working and practicing with these. And so now it's time to check in and see what we remember about these. So you're going to be taking a quiz on Tuesday, and this is just a review study guide for you. You can go back and look at all those videos and all those things I put up for you this week that will help you study for this quiz that you're going to take tomorrow, Tuesday, October the 13th. But watch this video, because what I have done is I've recapped and went back over how we name three-dimensional figures, how we create them by using a net, and how we use the nets to find the surface area. Here is our three-dimensional figure. We found its faces, its edges, and its vertex, and we made a net using grad, uh, grid paper. We then took it and we drew it by freehand without any grid paper. We then could see that this lovely thing was a net. Here is our three-dimensional figure. It now has dimensions on it. The dimensions are the numbers we're using to find the area. What are we going to multiply together to find the area? And we then, ladies and gentlemen, actually found the area of this pyramid by finding its faces, finding the area of every face that is made up of the three-dimensional figure. And then we added all of the areas together to get our total 
surface area right here, which is known as SA. And that's it. Uh, that's the end of nets and surface area, sixth graders. Watch this video. Then you're going to go ahead and I have some practice work for you in your Google Slide Classroom. Again, here's the screen that tells you about a vocabulary and an actual visual. This will be in YouTube, so I will attach it for you. Wrapping it up, I went ahead and added another video for you from my favorites, Khan Academy. I even added another video I found online at YouTube for you that goes through some nets, showing you nets, how to name them, how to draw them, how to find their surface area. And then sixth graders, you're going to find six problems to do as homework, which really isn't homework. It's more like practice, practice, practice. But you do it and you want to draw it out and send me a picture of this one, this one, and this one. There's three that you're going to draw. And then you're going to send me pictures of them. And then there's three of them that you're going to find the area of this one, this one, and this one. And then finally, sixth graders, and all of those, I should step back, all of those, you just put your picture in here. You should be able to put your picture in there. And then I gave you some notes that we put in our notebook last week. Um, and I made you a note that if you can't read it, please holler at me and I'll tell you what the words say. Sometimes I write really fast and you might not be able to read it because it's in cursive. So just holler at me if you need any help with that. But otherwise, that's the end of your Monday video, October the 12th. Tomorrow, October 13th, we're going to take a quiz all over nets and surface area. If you have questions, as always, reach out to Mrs. P, email me, contact me, whatever you need to do so that I can help you be better, be your best at mathematics when it comes to geometry. Thank you, sixth graders, and until next time.